to the National Critics' Choice Online News and say it with Hyatt, uh, the Hyatt International Hotels Worldwide as well, on, online. Um, first of all, in this World Gourmet Summit, you know, this is your first time here that you have come to Singapore. This is my third time oh. and I have enjoyed the most this time because I could meet the people, meet the real chefs, you know, meet the great people who actually create the summit and also have the great food of Singapore. Oh, sorry for, for, for my mistake and my ignorance, uh, but really, um, you've been in Singapore for a very long time uh, since you've been inspired by your grandmother, I heard. And uh, what does it mean to be a Indian, you know, uh, a diaspora, uh, having traveled to many far and wide, uh, you know, in, in many other countries like the United States and New York, where you have your restaurant in Junoon. Um, really, what does really what does it mean to be a dias diaspora for you? I think diaspora is a very important part of our journey, a human civilization. It is also important to understand what you leave behind as your roots and what you continue to carry with yourself. It should reflect in your food, it should reflect in your talent, in your ability. But I'm very clear about one thing that with my food, I represent my country, my motherland, a tribute of my cooking skills and a tribute of my life goes back home. And I have the privilege of expressing that in New York City. So Janoon creates that stage for me that I can express my love through food. Expressing your love. Uh, Really, who was your, your deepest inspiration other than your grandma? You, know, you carried on many years in your journey, uh, developing your techniques uh, as a chef. Is there anyone else? You have, you have, uh, I've been extremely inspired by the Sikh tradition of langars, which is actually a free communal kitchens in temples of the Sikhs. So one of my greatest inspiration of cooking comes from there. I was born and raised in Amritsar with the Holy Golden Temple. It's a Sikh shrine, is there. And I had the greatest opportunity of understanding the power of food beyond just a plate. What it actually feeds, it actually nourishes, is beyond the physical needs. I think learning that from that institution of Langars really helped me to understand more about the value of food and also the power of food. Values, power, the food itself. You know, many of us also, um, you have even you create your value system you know, in creating cookbooks, CDs, DVDs, pertaining to your talk shows even as well. Um, one wonder asks, you know, what is your secret of your success of becoming a Michelin star chef? And <laughs> really, uh, it's amazing that you achieved that you know, in New York City. I think there is no secret, it's a very honest uh, fact that it's your dream. It's all the people who work with you, they create that magic. I'm just a small part of the equation. I feel that it's their magic, it's their hard work, it's their reflection of their dedication which gets you any kind of awards. Speaking about rewards, um, really, what is the very ingredient that you usually use, or probably your favorite ingredient that you love to use, uh, that is inspired by your grandmother uh, in the kitchen? You know, is there any peculiar ingredients that you would recommend? <coughs> in my grandmother, we had a pantry of spices, which exists in almost every Indian home. Like the mothers would keep a small kind of a box, which had all the spices, they treasured them. I'm crazy about uh, cardamom. If I'm talking about on the food world, I'm crazy about the cardamom. It's a spice which has pods inside. It's very fragrant. And I also think that it could be used in any course. And most importantly, when I taste cardamom, it takes me back to the memory of festivals, celebrations, togetherness, families, everything. Speaking about cinnamon, is that, is that correct? Or cardamom? cardamom. cardamom. Oh, okay. So, Folks, please uh, look out for that spice that uh, Chef Vikas <laughs> loved to use on his grandmother's kitchen, and he still does in Junoon. Um, apart from rewards you know, um, and being a diaspora in New York, and uh, there's one very heartbreaking question that people like to know, and that is, uh, what is 
uh, what is your philosophy of food? You know, could you share us, could you share with us, really, your, your belief or philosophy of food? <coughs> Robin, I have a very clear measurement of that. <coughs> I'm sorry. I feel any dish which we eat, majority of them come with the extreme history of comfort. You eat food and it reminds you of a moment in time in your life which gives you comfort, it heals you. It brings you back to that stage of life where you were calm, you were yourself and you were taken care of. I think food has a power to evoke that memories. That food memories really come a lot from purism. If you are, I'm not saying other foods or other diversions of cuisines can't do that. But for me, it's that little honest cooking of the mother's kitchens from India, which I try to bring it to the American tables without losing the roots or the basic essential flavors. That will break my heart when I feel that my food doesn't have those emotions. I need to have that food contained within that memory, within that beauty which captures not just the food, but that comfort of centuries. Yeah, speaking, speaking about comforts, um, really, what's what's your your, your um, long life advice, really, you know, for aspiring chefs uh, who wants to attain, uh, you know, perfection, you might say, uh, in getting a Michelin star? Um, what what kind of lifelong learning could you share with us? Maybe just three points. I am myself an aspiring chef, so I can't give any advice to aspiring chef. I feel it's very important that um, food, what we serve on the table, is not just the food. It contains a lot more power than taste. Taste is very important, but what is more important, understanding and respecting that ingredient. Respecting it to the point when you know it that you have to do full justice to it. We cannot bargain because our taste buds are very powerful, they have very strong memory and they are very genuine. We know exactly what we like and what we don't like. So you have to be honest in what you do, you have to be understanding, very important part of my career has been understanding that I'm in a service industry, not to serve myself but to serve others. I think that's a very crucial point of a chef, you know, you come into this industry, you gravitate towards the food world because you love the element of service. You love that when you were sick, you were fed. You love that when you were failed, you were served. You love it when you had something great happening in your life achievement. It was served, it was celebrated around food. So I love that notion of food that I tell all my younger chefs, you know, I'm quite old to say that, but I want to tell them that it's very important to be true to those moments, to those feelings of the power of food. Power, the food itself. Uh, what is like for you when you first heard that you uh, have won the uh, Virgin Star, and as at the same time, what is next for you right, uh, right now? I think Michelin Star goes to the team. It goes to all the people who work endlessly to make every evening a success. At least the ability, at least the power to make it successful, to the best of their efforts, it's to them. And also to all those people throughout this journey who has inspired me for so many years, from the street vendors to the women at home, who abundantly shared with me their recipes, their skills and encouraged me. I think the Michelin star is for them. I just received it on their behalf. And one important thing of people who believe in perfection, perfection is not a destination, it's the name of the journey. It's very important that we always keep that in mind. That there's anything which is dead comes to a point where we can say it's reached destination. Anything which is alive is always in a motion to achieve something better, to achieve something which is more perfect. But for me to say that food was perfect, it's a wrong word because it's always repetiting, you know, you're always trying to create the same thing over and over again. And what's next for you, you know, after the World Gourmet Summit? And what actually inspired you to create such a wonderful menu for the World Gourmet Summit? 
here at Song India. I think what inspired me the most about coming to World Gourmet Summit was my love for Singapore. I've loved the street foods of Singapore for as long as I remember. I love that it's such a continuation of culture and food which exists in Singapore. Like people come to Singapore for a better life, for you know change, for raising their families. It's a beautiful place for that. But they also bring their culture with them. I think that is something very powerful. And they contain it to continue so that it continues to live forever, a culture. I think that is something which, which gra I gravitate towards that in Singapore. And I wish I will be able to make you all proud with this new project which I'm writing called The Streets of Singapore. It's about the flavors, it's about the spirit, it's about the diaspora, which you called. It's about that, we'll see.